And, the, and this one right here is the Stans Mountain Act of 2000, May 29th of 2002. It's called SHRG uh, 107756. You read it, you'll see Stephen E. Grassy's name on it. I didn't write this, I didn't create this. This is what they're doing behind your backs. These are the guys that you elected that you trusted. Trust, basically, I might as well say trusted with, with, with the future of your children. Because you thought they were looking out for your best interest. Sadly, they're not. Because if they were, why are they passing all this? This is one bill. This bill right here, SC1134, which I stated earlier in the beginning, Ron White, and if he was really looking out for the best interests of the community, and you guys, the Oregonians, under S1134, public law right here, he, were, they, he participated in it, it passed. Why are the Hammonds in jail? Ask yourself that. Where is he at? It shouldn't have gone to trial. Under this bill, this should be exonerated. Including the, wrong, the Whiting Amendment of 2007. Even though this came out in 1997-98. But this is the bill that he passed and knowingly allowed the Hammonds to be falsely prosecuted by these criminals. Basically what they did is they all got together just like we are right here today. And they made a plan. They said this is what we got to do. You're a part of the corporation. You're a part of the corporation. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. That's what they've done. Now it's time for you guys to do the same thing. Go down there to the county recorder's office. Get involved. Start asking questions. Start vetting your sheriff. Uh, you can bet your sheriff on... Uh, what site is that? Uh, on Sheriff Mack's site. You can bet your, your constitution, constitutional sheriff's uh, site. You can bet your sheriff. You can find out if he's a constitutional sheriff. If he's a constitutional sheriff, he's going to tell you that the Hammonds don't belong in jail, that the Bundys don't belong in jail, and that LaVoy got murdered. If he tells you LaVoy got murdered, the boy was uh, a pulled a gun or, or, or came against them, then he's not a constitutional sheriff. Because everybody's seen it, clear blue sky. That he was murdered straight up. He was shot three times in the back. Well, that's a problem with Baker County right now is we do not have a constitutional sheriff. Do a recall. There you go. Recall. You do your recall. You guys are the voice. We just did that. We just helped down there and uh, judge, uh, get Judge Grassy. Judge Grassy's got till the 22nd till the June to get out. Correct. Grassy's been recalled. You guys got to get together. Each and every one of you is an, is an integral part of this wheel. Each of you got to get together. When we leave here today, have everybody else's phone number. Say, hey, I want to work with you. I want to get involved with this. Because if you just go from here and go, ah, what the hell? That's exactly what's going to happen. The same way that you, the Hammonds lost their, la their land? Or well, they didn't lose it, but their men are in prison? And, and, they, they and the reason why they want to go down? They said that they were going to have to... If anything comes out with the property, if they remove these guys, that the government has first right of refusal on their property. Correct. Okay. That's so what's up. They want the anyway. gold. The bottom line is they want the minerals. Okay, they've already sold so much already. They've already promised so much to offshore corporations. We got to we got to get together and stop this. And 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 as passionate as he is, this is why we're here. Because we're seeing it with our own eyes, and we're because we read these bills. And we can't believe it. Why hasn't their attorney used that? Because he's a part of the Bar Association. Let me clarify that, as that gentleman said. They're part of the American Bar Association. They started right after the Civil War in eliminating the organic 13th Amendment. Yeah. One of the things that I would like for you guys to do is to take a constitution and confront your sheriff and ask him within the constitution what he's bound to uphold and not uphold. If he, Unfortunately, though, the organic 13 is not in these. Right. Tell but, what the organic 13 says. Or it basically, is the American Bar so no member of the American Bar Association should be holding any public office. Mm -hmm. Not the judicial branch, not the legislative branch, and not the executive branch. It says no attorney. It's part of the British, British registry. 
the Bar Association actually is is all the way back to the British Crown. It has no it has no right to be even on, in America. The American Constitution, Supreme Constitutional Law, is not even at play here anymore, folks. It's called Admiralty Law. So it's Admiralty Law. So when you go to the federal web page and you go down to where 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 our patriots are at. Look, look, look up the word admiralty. Look up the actual definition on how the American Bar Association wrote it in a black law dictionary. I didn't write this, they wrote this. And then ask yourself, why are they charging them on the law of the sea when we have a constitution under Article 6, Section 2, Clause 2? As the supreme law of the land is the United States Constitution. Period. That also was, was uh, supported by Marbury versus Madison. And I read, read that Supreme Court law, that ruling, that the Supreme Court of the law is the United States Constitution, period. So why, so why are they being prosecuted under admiralty? With regards to your question, I'm going to finish it up. Anna J. Brown has a, vast, ha, has, has a large interest, but not that, that she used to be the chief, might still be, but chief deputy of the Oregon Bar Association. So if your attorney was to bring any of these documents, including showing Anna J. Brown's financial interests and the minerals that are there in that table, what are the probabilities of your attorney filing a complaint for having her to remove herself, disqualify herself under federal law chapter 28, disqualification of a judge? Do you honestly think that attorney's gonna look out for your best interest? When you tell him he's going to have to basically drop a big turd where he eats. <laughs> because at the end of the day, this is what is, this is what, where, where basically he makes his living. And this is how the American Bar Association, through our education, has infiltrated our schools and all three branches of government. All these criminals that I mentioned as your elective representative, 85%, almost 90% of them, are part of the American Bar Association. On top of it, they have law firms that represent Calico Resource, Uranium One, Iron Triangle, Malheur Enterprise, Cliff Bend Solution LLC. And guess what? They get kickbacks. So do you honestly think that attorney is gonna stir up the net hornet's nest? Every time that federal judge, Anna J. Brown, uh, here's a case against John, John Public, against the federal government. And she finds for the federal government, she gets what? About, uh, she gets between five and $10,000 every time she rules in favor of the of government, which goes to her pension, which is an incentive under 5 U.S.C. code. Don't take my word for it. I beg you, look it up. Matter of fact, the law is here. I brought it. So whenever you guys want to... Uh, um, after that, we can go and we can read it. We can go document by document and read the whole entire document and, and, and then we can articulate it and how they systematically, uh, through the Admiral, the Admiralty Law and the American Bar Association, are defrauding you guys. Uh, let me go to the gentleman here in the, in, the, in, the, in the red. Go ahead. Well, you asked why they were using Admir Admiralty Law is because that's the only way they can get jurisdiction. Yeah. Well, that's the same reason why they keep trying to um, rename or change the definition of waters of the United States. They're trying to get it to where <clears throat> that have an admiralty law, mm -hmm. which is like in international waters. Correct. Now, and it also states in navigable waters. So like up the Mississippi, somewhere you can take a ship. Well, what they've been trying to do is call anything that moves, if you can float a rubber duck down it, that's <laughs> navigable waters, which gives the feds uh, authority. That's yeah. why they use that. But at the end of the day, don't, aren't they supposed to uphold the United States Constitution? Aren't they supposed to take an oath of office? And what does Article 6, Section 2, Clause 2 says? What does Murbury versus Madison ruling say? What did uh, uh, Scalia's told us with regards to the Constitution? What did Chris Ann Hall says about the Constitution? Supreme law of the land. I really don't care what, what they put out there. They have zero jurisdiction. Not that I always said it.
not that, not, that the, the, not that I just say it, but the Constitution tells me that. The Federalist Papers tells me that. And there's about 20 pages over there of Supreme Court rulings that, that, that I printed out and read. That it's here, on that corner, which I'd be more than happy to show you guys. And how in the, how in the world are we allowing it to happen? Just, yeah. All that happened was in 1934 when the government went into bankruptcy. All the states had to sign on to that bankruptcy. And so that, and when that happened, you, you lost all your constitutional rights. The federal government is a corporate entity. And when you walk into a courtroom and you make a general appearance, and I've practiced to study law for 55 years, I'm a former government official. But when you walk into that courtroom and you make a general appearance, you're giving jurisdiction of yourself and your case to that judge. The only way you avoid that is you appear, when I, go into the, I went into Judge Hogan's courtroom, I had a crowd almost this size. And uh, I said, I'm here by special appearance, Judge Hogan, until informed by the court that I'm proceeding in an Article III Court of Constitutional Due Process. He just said, proceed, like a little child sitting up there. I had a crowd sitting there, and when I got through speaking, like I'm speaking now, I started to speak to uh, judge, the, conversationally. And the federal judge threw up his hands, kung fu style, to keep me from speaking to him. Now, the only way that, that those judges get uh, control over you is when you make a general appearance in those courtrooms. We are citizens. We have rights. They are public employees. They have duties. But if you turn yourself over to, a, to an administrative law judge who's on the payroll, like you're talking about, you're all tied together, I said, if they do step up and, and step out, they're, they're kicked out. I had Judge Harlow Lennon, I, when I went through law school uh, 50 years ago, I had many of these judges who said they couldn't wait to get out of the system. Harlow Lennon, Judge Lennon, said he saw it coming in uh, in, uh, in the uh, early 70s when uh, Lee Johnson became Attorney General. So that's the key, is that they have corrupted the process. And if you turn yourself over to them, to a bar attorney, they will talk tough to you, all oh, the dirty rats and their dirty this, that, until you walk into that courtroom. And when you walk into that courtroom, they say, now, damn it, you sit down and shut up. If you say one word, I'm going to get up and walk out of here. That's how they uh, control you. So the key is, people, this is the solution here with the, with the crowd. You file the documents. We show up in court with the crowd like this. I catch the judges peeking out of the chamber doors when I come in. I've had eight of these judges on the stand. When they prosecuted me, I've been prosecuted uh, 23 times, arrested repeatedly for trying to speak. When I do speak, I say, do you have any questions? They have no questions, because I'm a former prosecutor. One of the judges used to be my assistant. And I've had judges tell me, oh, you're going to fight him. Well, we have been fighting him. What you're doing is absolutely right. But what is critical is that when you go into that courtroom, you have the right documents filed, that you go down to the sheriff's office before the hearing, a day or two, and say, Sheriff, I'm going to be in that courtroom to speak. Do you have any problem with that? You back them off. I've been attacked violently in the courtroom by sheriff's deputies. I've been attacked in my home, in uh, other places, violently, uh, chained up, uh, sent to the insane asylum, run through a cat scanner, trying to shut this thing up. And, <laughs> and I've made it to 78. I'll be 78 here soon. Uh, but, and trying to pass that on. Father, mother said, leave it better than you found it. My father said, leave it better than you found it. I had no idea what I was getting into. I passed out flyers to some of you. You can see who the butt kicker is. My little four foot ten, 85 pound, 85 year old mother, when they came to arrest me, I've got sons that make you look like a shrimp, but they're all like this. And my mother's standing with her fist. You're going to arrest me too? And they go, I'm not going to arrest you. She says, where is he? Out the door. And my mother, I was like, arms swinging when she came back. I said, did you catch your mother? No, he got away. Another case with a, he's in the courtroom. All of a sudden, the guards showed up. And I said, mother. And she shot out of the jury box up to the judge. She says, what's the meaning of this? And he threw up his hands like a heat shield from my mother, my little four foot ten mother people. It's that. It's, we owe it to our children, to our posterity. We owe them a clean government, a clean environment, uh, and no death. And with having these crooked, thieving attorneys sitting on all and all this, stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars, paying themselves one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, and, and it is outrageous, people. And because you let them do it, now when they see me coming into the court, and when they see this crowd coming in, where you file the right documents, you post it on the internet now, so that the world knows it before you go into the courtroom. The courtroom is the courthouse is a place to store public records. People, get that through your head. Nothing is a fact until it's typed up, date stamped, and filed with the clerk of the court. 
Everything that goes on in the courtroom, everywhere else, is just hot air. It's legally a fact, but it's hot air until it's a matter of public record. That's the key. So